Where to start? It's humbling to share the stage and introduce Riss Bonifond as this year's graduation speaker. Throughout his 21 years of service to the Kent Hill School as headmaster from 1990 to 2011, Riss demonstrated the power that small boarding schools have on the lives of young people. His legacy is underscored by the capacity to not only develop and champion, but live the institution's core values in every aspect of, life, of his life. Most striking was his foresight and ability to cultivate an intentional, purposeful, and thoughtful community where students are inspired to reach their fullest potential and are surrounded by adults who are encouraging and supportive. Kensal was and continues to be a place where the individual has always and will always matter. Lest we forget, one person of principle can always make a difference. Rist and his wife Joy are, without exception, two of these people. I arrived at Kent's Hill on July 1st, and there was a letter from Rist on my desk, both recounting his arrival on the hill in 1990 and wishing me well as I embarked on my Kent's Hill journey. I was struck both by the power of the words he shared that resonated with me and also by the thoughtfulness of his act. Over the course of this year, I have regularly spent time with Rist and have benefited greatly from his experience and mentorship. I'm now honored to also call him a friend. Please welcome Rist Bonifant. Great, everybody in my family is convinced I'm going to pitch over and uh, fall off the stage. So I'll see if I can disappoint them. Mr. Cheney, Mr. Lane, members of the Board of Trustees, staff, and undergraduate students and guests, good morning and welcome. A special good morning to the members of the class of 2018 and your families. Students, you have worked so very hard. I don't know, I'm going to probably lose my balance trying to turn from side to side. So bear with me. <laughs> Students, you have worked so hard, and um, this is an important milestone in your lives, and so enjoy it. And um, parents and other close relatives, you have worried and cheered and encouraged your children through all their ups and downs for all these many years. This is your day to rejoice. I have listened to over, over the years to 26 graduation addresses at Kent Hill and another 20 or more at various schools and colleges. Some have been inspiring, some profound. Thank you. Some have been inspiring, some have been profound, some very moving, and some are just terrible. <laughs> the only trouble is, I don't remember anything about any of them. This is a rather humbling fact for whoever takes on the role of guest speaker. While my task is to encourage the members of the senior class to greater and greater self-discovery and academic achievement, most of you, I suspect, are focused on lunch. Before going any further, allow me to introduce my partner in crime man who I hold, whom I hold in the highest regard, my colleague, Peter Hodgson. Pete and I are going to undertake a perhaps unprecedented approach to a graduation speech. My voice tends to give out at unpredictable and infelicitous times. I have also been known to tear up when I speak about things that are close to my heart. These tendencies, as you might have guessed, are not conducive to giving a speech. Fortunately, Peter has agreed to stand by me here at the lectern, and he will step in should I, either of those phenomena occur. This is not to imply in any way that I am the ventriloquist, and Pete is the ventriloquist, well, you know. Pete, thank you very much for your collaboration. Um, I should mention, too, that my lovely daughter and her lovely mother 
and uh, Matt Crane have volunteered to um, work as an early relay system. So if you can't hear me in the back, I just have to single matter Amy. Um, but um, I didn't want you to be con disconcerted by people who look like they're suffering from an attack of fleas. In thinking about what I want to say to you today, I did what all good writers do and consulted Google. I came away from that experience with a couple of thoughts. One, I was surprised to see there are so many good pieces of advice readily available. On the other hand, I was disappointed to see so many bad ones. They were not bad because they took per bad because they took perfectly sound advice and trivialized it. Can you hear me in the stands? No? Thank you. How's that? Better? Do you want me to read the first few pages of my pitch again? <laughs> I found myself drawn to disparate quotes from such people as Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, who said, cleverness is a gift, kindness is a choice, gifts are easy, choices can be hard. And this quote from the late Woody Hayes, a longtime football coach at the Ohio State University, nothing that comes easy is worth a dime. And as a matter of fact, I never saw a football player make a tackle with a smile on his face. That's pretty profound. Think about it. And then finally, Ellen DeGeneres said in a speech, success is to live your life with integrity and to not give in to peer pressure to do something you are not. To counterbalance these eloquent words of wisdom, there are many speakers who just repeat the same old cliches time and again. Such traditional but slightly embalmed ideas can have a saltifying effect. For example, one writer said, learning what you don't want to do is the next best thing to figure out what you want to do. I don't quite understand that. Another writer said, have big dreams. You know, it is very simple. You can't put a large box in a small box. Or this one, it is unimaginably hard, unimaginably hard to stay conscious and alive in the adult word, day, world, day in and day out. And no, this is not a quote from Mick Jagger. If you go to several graduations this spring, you'll hear the same basic themes presented time after time, whether it is the same old saw, get up early, work hard, and live your dream, or pick a big dream, because small dreams are not important. Now that you've graduated, the world lies at your feet. Go out and get it. This is not to say this advice, advice is bad, but simply that it is too familiar and dull. Now, having gone out on a limb, I will endeavor to share with you some thoughts regarding what I have, I have found of value in my own life and has seemed to be of value in many students' lives. Here goes. Remember that respect is the foundation of all relationships. Knowing, knowing that there will be times in your life and things don't work out as wish you, pardon me, you had wished, draw upon your inner strength of character and prevail. Be someone other people can count on. Remember that your void is your voice. Be honest in all matters. Smile more. Never drive impaired by alcohol or drugs. <clears throat> Don't take the environment for granted. It needs your help. Courage, both moral and physical, is present in everyone. So you just have to tap into it. And finally, get a dog, preferably a big one. <laughs> there are many people today who are worried about the state of our nation and the future of our country. There is no question that we have entered a period of unprecedented disrespect and dishonesty in our political landscape. There is rampant violence in our cities and our schools. I share their concerns. But despite all the negativity that exists, I remain optimistic about the future. The reason I feel that way is you, the graduating class and the classes that will come behind you. I believe you have the collective courage and wisdom 
to tackle these issues in a humane and respectful way. Because you have attended Kent's Hill and benefited from the love and dedication that the faculty and staff have given you, and because of the warmth of the friendships you have developed with fellow students from around the world, you can't make a difference. Because the news can be so difficult to watch these days, many newscasts now end with uplifting stories of volunteers helping victims of destructive storms, of volunteers helping victims, people reaching out to veterans who have served our nation, <clears throat> and students who are taking the lead in trying to keep guns out of our schools. Finally, I would ask that you, as you depart campus, to take a final look at the Gold Dome sitting on top of Beers Hall. It was renovated in 1999. Not an easy task. The top had to be sawed off the, the cupola, lifted by a crane, and moved to behind the dining hall, the old dining hall, for repairs. It may appear that it was simply repainted with gold paint, when in fact the color is achieved by tiny tiles. Each tile is hand sanded and imprinted with gold leaf, then carefully attached to the dome. When you look at the dome, you see its overwhelming beauty. Yet perhaps now you can appreciate what each tile brings <coughs> to the overall experience. It is much like Kent's Hill. Every time, <coughs> each tile represents. Pete's going to take over. Finally, I would ask you, when you depart from campus, to take a final look at the Gold Dome sitting atop Beers Hall. It was renovated in 1999, and not an easy task as the top had to be sawed off the cupola, lifted from the crane, and moved to behind the dining hall for repairs. It may appear that it was simply repainted with gold paint, when in fact the color is achieved by tiny tiles, each tile hand sanded and imprinted with gold leaf, then carefully attached to the dome. When you look at the dome, you see its overwhelming beauty. Yet perhaps now you can appreciate what each tile brings to the overall appearance. It's much like Kensal School. Each tile represents one of the many students who have passed through this school. One is that doctor. She was once a girl who was a top scholar and athlete, and now she's in a small town in Maine after rejecting higher paying jobs from out of state. Another is for that boy who struggled mightily to write a paper, but is now on his way to becoming a great chef. Yet another is for that kid who could never finish his homework because he would rather play video games. And he just graduated from college with a degree in computer game design. And then there is the tile for the boy who was a refugee from war-torn Sudan, who, because of his time at Kent Hill, was able to attend a highly competitive university and is now a lawyer focusing on immigration issues. These few are representative of a wide range of students who for nearly 200 years have made the school the wonderfully diverse and caring place that it is. May it always be so. Thank you very much. <laughs>